Hi, welcome to our 8th module. In this lecture, we will discuss the different herd management being practiced in large ruminant production. At the end of this module, you are expected to identify the different herd division in a large ruminant production, identify the herd management practices per herd division, and identify the other herd management practices. Depending on the type of production, the herd management's goal is to produce a crop of high-quality calves, properly weight fattener, or high-volume milk. Various factors contribute to the accomplishment of this goal. Thus, quality of management, play nutrition, and farm infrastructures are important determinants of the large ruminant farm's success. For us to easily grasp the management in a typical beef or dairy farm, let us identify first why do we need to perform herd division. For practical reason, herd division ensures the appropriate nutrition of various age groups of the herd. Nutritional requirements of large ruminants are directly related to the age. If in case we perform one herd management system in a farm with varying animal age, Adult animals will often deprive younger animals of feed. In a large ruminant farm, animals may be divided into a pregnant herd, which is composed of pregnant females, a breeding herd, which consists of dry cows and heifers ready for breeding. After the breeding season, pregnant animals are transferred to the pregnant herd. A heifer herd, which is composed of a heifer not yet ready for breeding, Heifer calves are included in this herd after weaning. Steer or fattener herd, which is consists of growing cattle and those to be fattened for the market. A bull herd, which is consists of mature males kept mainly for servicing breeding cows. And for dairy cattle or water buffalo farm, a milking herd is added. This is composed of lactating animals used for milk production. Again, we will emphasize that different herd requires different management. In addition, approach on the management of calves is different from the rest. We will discuss the general management per herd in the next slides. Care and management of calf starts even before the calf is dropped. Assistance during calving should be rendered only when necessary. The first thing to do is to check if the calf is alive or dead. Once confirmed alive, allow the animal to cleanse the calf. Drain out the mucus from the nose and mouth of the calf. When breathing is difficult, raise the calf by its hind legs to drain out the mucus in the nose or throat, or lay the calf on its side and apply compression on the rib cage. Tie the navel cord about 3 cm away from the body and cut off the navel 1 to 2 cm below the tied portion. The cut navel should be soaked in a tincture of iodine to avoid infection. Calves should suckle colostrum milk from their mother within 3 hours after calving. A calf that has not suckled 5 to 6 hours after calving should be led to the dam's udder. Orphan calves should be raised to cow's milk or milk replacer. Now we proceed in the management of a pregnant cow. Pregnant cow requires different management before, during, and after calving or parturition. Before calving, separate the cows expecting to calve from the pregnant herd and keep them individually in a maternity pen. This should be done two months before calving. Check the calf presentation two weeks before the calving through rectal palpation or ultrasound. This is to know if there will be malpresentation and thus will require assistance during calving. Deworming is also done one month before parturition. During calving, assistance should be made only when necessary. However, it is important for you to know the three stages of parturition, including its duration, to know whether the process is still normal or not. The first is the dilation of the cervix. During this stage, Fetal membranes are pushed into the cervix. The water bag comes out and hangs out of the vulva which may rupture anytime. This stage takes 30 to 110 minutes depending on the intensity of the labor pain. The next is the expulsion of the fetus. In a normal position, the forelimbs appear first followed by the head. This takes around 15 to 30 minutes. 
And last is the expulsion of the placenta. It takes around four and a half hours for the placenta to drop off after expulsion of the calf in water buffalo. In cattle, it takes around five to six hours after birth. If the placenta is not expelled, this is classified as a case of retained placenta and must be assisted. After parturition, do not allow the cow to eat the placental membrane. Flush the uterus with 10% betadine solution. Take note that this should be done after the correction of the retained placenta if there's any. Check if the dam has milk for the calf. At all times, provide the newly calved cow free access to feed and water to regain its strength. Also, observe the occurrence of the postpartum estrus starting from 15 to 45 days after calving. Management of milking animals involves factors such as regularity of feeding and milking activities. Proper feeding and nutrition is a must for maximum milk production. Good quality forages should be fed as much as possible. Keep the cows clean, especially when milking. Brush off adhering dirts and clip long hairs from the other hind legs and rear flanks. When needed, especially in hot months, Cool the animals by sprinkling or splashing them with waters during hot hours of the day. Silence must also be observed during milking. Milk the cows regularly once, twice, or thrice daily depending on the milk production. Note that milking time intervals must be equal. Next, we proceed to the management of a dry cow. Dry period is the interval between the end of lactation and the period of subsequent calving. A minimum of 60 days and a maximum of 90 days dry period is recommended to serve as the resting period in water buffalo. In cattle, the dry period is limited to 60 days. This is the time of rebuilding the body reserves and tissues of the ruminant. During this period, the animal should be fed with a high plane of nutrition. Normally, Dry cows are fed ad libitum with forage without additional supplementary concentrates. Heifers will become the future cows of the farm, thus they also need special attention when it comes to management. Heifers should be fed properly to reach its pubertal weight of 300 to 350 kilograms depending on the breed and deliver a calf at a younger age. If nutrition is inadequate, Heifers will not reproduce normally even at older years. Also, one must allow growing heifer to interact with male animals when it nears pubertal age. Heifers usually attain sexual maturity as early as 16 months. However, it is good to point that breeding should start when the heifer reaches 300 kg of their body weight. Next is the bull. Bulls should be in good condition at the start of the breeding season. Remember that bulls should be allowed to breed when they are at least 2 years of age. When they reach this breeding age, a balanced ration should support 300 to 400 kilograms of average daily gain. Should be provided. Mineral supplementation such as calcium, phosphorus, selenium, and zinc must be given as this directly influence the bull's sexual activity. Regular exercise should be given to bulls to keep their aggressiveness. Bulls should be given supplemental feeding of concentrates 60 to 90 days before and after the breeding period depending on their condition. Please take note that a breeding bull can be kept in a herd as long as he is aggressive enough to mate. However, a bull should be kept out of the herd after 2.5 or 3 years when its offspring reach the breeding age to avoid inbreeding. Now let us discuss other herd management practices. Take note that the newly born calf should be identified for recording purposes. A calf should have an individual animal record indicating the ID number, the sex, date of birth, sire and dam number, birth weight, and body measurements. There are two types of animal identification used in large ruminant forms, the ear tag and the ear notch. Ear tag is a plastic animal ID attached to the ears. It is widely used because it can be read easily. Ear tag is best applied in the central cartilage located in front of the ear using an applicator. On the other hand, 
Earnatch is used when there is no other means of applying permanent identification. Depending on the form, there is a coding system on how to read an earnatch. Next is the horning. The horning is the process of removing the horns. It is a sophisticated practice in the cattle industry. However, this is seldom done in the water buffalo. This is done especially in large-scale operations to facilitate handling and management of the animals. This process provided less space in feedlots, less space in transit or shipment, and makes the herd more uniform in appearance. The cattle should be dehorned while they are still young because they are easier to handle. Dehorning can be done by the use of a chemical such as caustic potash or soda, by electric dehorner, and by hot iron. In the backyard setting, the hot iron is the most preferred method because of its minimal cost and horn regrowth is not a problem. The horn calves only when the horn buttons can be felt. Normally, a soldering iron is heated until it is red hot. This is applied to the horn buttons in a properly restrained calf. Fly repellent like pine tar are applied after the horning. Here is the appearance of a dehorn calf. As early as 6 months, bulls should have a nose ring to make handling easier. The ring should be lightweight, non-rusting material about 4 cm in diameter. When the bull is around 10 to 12 months old, this should be replaced with a 7.5 cm brass or a canon metal ring. A trocar is used to puncture the nasal septum before inserting the ring. Allow at least 12 weeks for the nostril to heal before inserting the ring. In the case of the carabao, the nasal septum is also punctured. However, instead of a nose ring, rope is inserted. The purpose is the same and that is to make handling of the animal easier. And that concludes our short discussion about the different herd management in large ruminant production.